Hello, and today I'm going to show you guys how I made the Charlotte dress. This is my newest pattern release. It's available in AO, US letter, and A4 in sizes extra small through 3XL. I love this dress. I actually made this for myself to wear out in New York and didn't plan on making it on pattern, but I got so many compliments on it. It's super structured at the top, has boning, optional pockets, and then the skirt is also structured with interfacing. You can skip that step if you don't want the skirt to kind of poof out like it does, but I think that's one of the fun parts of this. Now we're gonna take this step by step. Please let me know if you have any questions and let's get started. So here you can see I have cut out all of my pattern pieces and my lining pieces. The first thing I'm gonna do is use a light to midweight interfacing. I'm also using the interfacing on the skirt, which you don't normally do. You normally just sit on the top, but it gives you, I'm making it with my hands right now. It's gonna give you that rounded structured effect for the bottom. So again, if you wanna skip that, you don't have to interface the skirt, but you will want to interface the top, which is what I'm gonna do right here. And we're gonna do that to all of those pieces. And we are just interfacing it the main fabric. So this is all of my main fabric pieces. I've set my lining aside. We're gonna do this side by side. So I like to start from the back and then move my way to the front and then do the opposite side. So I'm gonna start with my center back, put that right sides facing to my side back hit in place and I'm gonna sew this down. The entire pattern does have 0.5 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna repeat that for the next side. That is gonna be our side front. And I'm gonna connect my side back with my side front, place the right side facing, pin in place and sew down. And once again, that's gonna look like this. Now we're gonna connect at our center front. I'm gonna take my side front place it right sides facing to my center front, pin in place, and then we are going to sew that down just like we did all the other pieces. Now that you have one whole side done, we're gonna start again from the back and we're gonna repeat those exact same steps, taking the center back to the side back. Once that's sewn, we're going to take that side back to our side front and then connect at the center. So we're kind of working our way from the outside to the inside, that's done purposefully. So that way, if you get a little bit off, which is common, it happens, you're not gonna have a totally crooked top. So you can see I've already done my opposite side. Now I'm going to connect at that center front and we should have our main fabric top completely done once this is sewn down. After you sew that to the center front, you should have something that looks like this. We're gonna repeat every single one of those steps for our lining exactly like we did with our main fabric. And once we've done that, you can see I'll have two pieces. Now we're gonna press our seams and we are gonna press this strategically. So the last seam is going to be just pressed open. Our next seam, which is our two sides coming together, our side back and our side front, is going to be pressed away from the center front. Same with our next one, it is away from the center front. And then same with the opposite side. So the reason that we're pressing this this way is because we are going to sew those down. Those are gonna be our boning channels. So make sure you press them away from the center front. I'm also gonna show you a graphic so you can see just how we're doing this. And then again, the center back and the side back can just be pressed flat. So you can see the full picture of what seams we're gonna be pressing away. Again, the center backs are just gonna be pressed flat. The other four seams are pressed away from the center front and they will be sewn down and our boning will be placed into those channels. So we'll have four boning channels total in our top. Before we do our boning, while your iron is out, press the seams flat. You don't have to worry about pressing those away. Just press them flat for your lining. Once that's done, set your lining aside and we are going to cut our boning. Reference back to that photo if you can't remember which ones we're doing. But we are going to measure three fourths of an inch from the top and three fourths of an inch from the bottom. And we're gonna cut four of those. Now we're gonna create our channels. So you can see I've got that pressed away from my center front and we are just going to sew down that seam allowance. And this is actually what we're going to insert our boning into. So you can see it's a little hard to see because my thread matches really well, but my seam allowance is sewn down and I have a channel for my boning. Now I'm just gonna enter in my boning into those four channels. So I like to burn my edges or you can tape the edges. This just prevents your boning from poking through the fabric. And once you've done either of those methods, methods you're just going to slide those into your channel for all four pieces. 
Once that's done for all four of your bony channels, we're gonna grab our front skirt piece, put our tops aside just for now, and we are going to take our pockets and we are going to place them right sides facing. The top of your pocket should match the notch that was put onto your pattern. That's where your pockets are going to start. And we're gonna place these right sides facing and pin in place. Normally I would do my pockets with the lining, but I really wanted this dress to match, so I'm actually doing it with my main fabric. You can choose if you wanna do it with your lining or your main fabric, but sew that into place. Once you're done, it should look like this. And now to prevent that pocket from kind of coming out, we're gonna sew the seam allowance to the back of the pocket. So you can see I'm doing that right here, and this is just gonna prevent it from coming out. Once that's done, set that aside, and we are gonna basically follow those exact same steps, but with our two back pieces and I'm gonna do this for both. So I'm gonna put that at the notch, pin in place with right sides facing, and then once I've done that and I've sewn it down, I'm gonna follow that same understitch step, and I'm gonna sew the seam allowance to the back of the pocket. And now we're gonna sew our skirt together. If you're skipping those pockets, you can just go all the way down, place your back to your front, right sides facing, and pin straight down on those sides. If you are adding the pockets like I am, we're gonna align those pockets, put everything right sides facing, and then when we pin, we're gonna pin all the way along that top edge, all the way around the pocket, and then all the way back down, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So I've done both sides. I'm going all the way to the top side, all the way around the pocket, down the bottom side, and that's how we are going to sew along. After you've done this and flipped it right side out and put your pockets inside your skirt, it should look like this. So you should really be able to see those pockets, but they are there. And now we're gonna set this aside and we are going to just do our lining. So our lining is much easier. We are just going to put these with the right sides facing of our skirt. And I don't know why I didn't film this, but you're gonna pin all the way down the side and then sew down connecting those so your two back skirt pieces are connected to your front skirt piece. Now we're gonna take that lining and we're gonna take the skirt and we're going to take the top and place those right sides facing the bottom of the top with the top of the skirt. Align your side seams and your back edges so that everything is matching up. We're gonna pin that in place and sew it down. And I like to kind of align my seams and then I'll go in and fill in just so I know everything is looking nice and neat before I go into sewing. Once that's sewed down, we are just going to trim off some of that seam allowance. This is gonna help everything sit a little bit flatter. And now we're gonna repeat those exact same steps for our main fabric. So I'm gonna lay the right sides facing the bottom of my top with the top of my skirt, align those seams, sew it down and then trim off the seam allowance. Now I'm gonna take that, lay it flat, and I'm going to take my lining and place my main fabric dress and my lining dress right sides facing. I'm going to pin all along the top and make sure I align all of those seams so that everything is nice and neat. Pin this in place and then we are going to sew down. And I do the same thing with my skirt. I kind of pin at the seams and then I'll go in and fill in as needed. And once I have that all sewn up, I'm going to trim off the seam allowance just like we did when we were combining the top and the skirt. Once that's done, we're gonna flip it right sides out so it looks like this. And I'm just going to bend this over and I'm actually going to pin this. You can press it as well. And the top stitch on the top is optional. You'll notice I'm not pressing my fabric as much because I'm working with sequins. So I'm pinning this before I do a top stitch. If you're not working with sequins, just press this nice and neat and then give yourself a nice little top stitch finish. Now we're in the home stretch, we are going to add our zipper. So here I have my dress face forward with the backs open. I'm gonna take that corresponding side, flip it so that the teeth are facing away from the center back. And I'm gonna pin this just to my main fabric. I'm not pinning this to the lining just yet. I am pinning this again with the teeth facing away from the center back just to my main fabric. And I'm gonna sew that down with a zipper foot on my machine. Once that's sewn, it should look like this. And now before we move on to the other side, I like to take this, I'm gonna zip this up really quickly and I'm gonna take a piece of chalk 
and mark where this is on the other side of the zipper that isn't sewn. So that way when we do the other side, we're gonna match up that chalk line with the waist of the other side. So I'm gonna match up my chalk line and I'm doing the exact same thing we did for the other side is that I'm taking my zipper, flipping the teeth away from the center back and then I'm pinning this just to my main fabric, again with the teeth facing away from the center back. So it'll look like this and then sewing that down. Before you move on to the next step, I would suggest zipping up your zipper, making sure everything looks right. And now we're going to add that lining. So we're gonna unzip this. I'm gonna take my lining, I'm gonna take it up and over, and I'm gonna make it so that it's right sides facing with my main fabric and the zipper is sandwiched in between the two layers. Again, with the teeth are still facing away from the center back and I'm going to pin this in place all the way down to where I stopped the other zipper. There should be a little tail left at the end. And then I'm just gonna repeat this for the opposite side. And once you're done, it'll kind of look like this strange, um, I like to call it a fortune cookie is kind of what it looks like, and I'll show you guys what I mean. But you can see I'm repeating the same thing for the opposite side, pulling my lining up and over, having it meet the main fabric with right sides facing, sandwiching the zipper in between with the teeth still facing away. And here's my little fortune cookie. This is what it'll look like. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and sew this down. Now I'm gonna flip this right sides out so you guys can see what this looks like. You will get this really, really nice, clean looking zipper that's sandwiched in between your main fabric and your lining. So all of your raw edges are really concealed and it looks nice and neat. Now we're gonna close up those bottom seams. So I'm gonna flip this inside out and I'm going to do my main fabric first and I'm gonna put my main fabric right sides together, pin in place, and when I start my sewing, I'm gonna start right underneath where my sewing ends from where the zipper was sewed down. So here I am pinning this, and then we're just going to sew that down into place. Once you're done, it should look like this, and now we're gonna do the exact same thing with our lining. So we're gonna place that right sides together, pin in place, and sew down. Again, trying to get right where that zipper ends and our sewing ends from where we sewed our zipper down so that there's no break in our sewing, no holes, and we'll sew that into place. Flip everything right sides out again, and we're really close to done with our dress. We're just going to hem our skirt, and I'm gonna do our main fabric and the lining fabric separately. So we're gonna take our main fabric first. We are going to fold this inside and pin all the way around. And we'll do this all the way around the skirt. Use as many pins as you need. Once that's all sewn down, I'm gonna trim off the seam allowance. It'll just keep this hem super flat so we don't have a ton of bulk. And then once that's trimmed, I'm going to fold over once more. So this will conceal all of those raw edges. And I'm gonna pin this into place again, all the way around my entire skirt. Give your hem a nice press so it looks nice and neat and flat. And then the last step is we are just going to repeat those exact same steps that we just did for our lining and we're gonna do another rolled hem for that one. And that is your very last step. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy your new custom dress that you just made for yourself. Make sure and subscribe for updates on the newest pattern releases and more sewing tutorials. Happy sewing, guys.